Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at Fluid Navigation Gestures. It's an app that pretty much gives you a different take on gesture based navigation for Android, with a more liquid-esque feel to it. Before we begin, the only real issue I found when using it was that it did not have an action to toggle rotation. Now if you're using Android Pie, you'll understand what I'm talking about, but it's just this little button that comes up when you rotate the phone with the rotation lock enabled, and when you tap on it, it allows you to rotate your screen manually. I think it may be just best if I give a hands-on demonstration of what you can change and what each function can do on the phone here, so let's go ahead and do that. So once you have everything enabled and you have hidden the navigation bar, there are a few more settings and options that we can go through here. And in the more options, this is to do with hiding the navigation bar. You can allow it to show when the keyboard is open, and you can also allow it to show in the recent app screen. Now I'm not sure if this works on Android Pie, because when I do go into the recent app screen, supposing this is the screen that they're talking about, the navigation bar isn't down here, but it is somewhat present in the app screen. So um, that could be a bug right now. But down to personalization, this is what you can change here. So you can, you can enable the different gestures. So depending on if you want the left hand side or the right hand side or the bottom edge for the gestures, you can turn those on and off selectively. So this is pretty handy if you have the uh, most apps have the uh, horizontal navigation uh, menu or drawer on the left-hand side and sometimes this gets in the way so you might as well I guess not have the left edge turned on if that's something that you want so I can show you that later in Discord or any other app pretty much that has that navigation drawer. When you tap on these options you can change them so the left edge you can change it to swipe and hold or the quick swipe. Swiping and holding is the one that you kind of do this and that will allow you to uh, I guess change I would switch back to the previous app and that's what it is indicated there and a quick swipe will take you back one. Now the bottom edge you can have up to four but the fourth one is actually only available for pro users so you will need to fork out I think it was just about three dollars Australian dollars that is uh, to get all the options enabled for yourself. So there are a numerous uh, amount of actions here so you can do none you can do home back recent apps kind of the usual there you can also go into the recent apps menu the power off dialog which is just this thing here. You can toggle split screen with the current app. You can view the notifications which brings down the notification shade like so. Quick settings will obviously expand it twice into that. You can also get it to open up the assistant for you if you wanted to and you can also uh, go to the previous app or open up the voice assistant. Now keyboard selector is for pro users as well as the google search. One thing they are missing is the toggle uh, for when you want to rotate your screen, which was introduced in Android Pie. So next up are apps, you can get it to open custom apps, and of course these are only available for pro users. And shortcuts, everyone can use that, which is great. So I might uh, just add that to this one. So if I swipe and hold, uh, you can make it open up a shortcut for like maps or something like that, or pretty much any app that has shortcuts enabled for itself. So for example, for Intello X, if I do that, it'll launch up a map. Okay, so those are the things you can change there, so quite simple, quite easy. Okay, my app crashed, but that's fine. So next up is triggers. So here you can change the durations of the gestures here, such as a long action duration, so how long you have to hold it out there for until it registers the long action. And for the left and right triggers, sensitivity, I guess, is the yes, the horizontal aspect of it, the width, and the size is how tall you want it to be. Uh, you might want to make that, I guess, a bit smaller on the left-hand side if you're used to using the slide-out navigation drawers, so that will help a lot. And you can do the same for the right and bottom. So bottom only has sensitivity because it takes up the entire bottom row, so you can just make it a bit more sensitive than what you would like it to, but uh, that is all there is so far. And here we have more options, so this is obviously for pro users, if they're greyed out for you. You can change the theme, so the primary colour and accent colour, so that is the the dark background, if I can show this better. So that background there when you swipe around. So you can change that to a certain color if you wanted to. And also the accent color, so the color of the icon that it represents, the action. And the size here, so I guess this means how big you want the liquid to be, the blob. Vibration, you can also adjust that. So if you only want a, a minor vibration when it's done, Whoops. 
or if you want a really heavy one. And sound, I think I have most of my sound off, but you can turn that up or down. And fingerprint gesture, double swipe the fingerprint sensor to trigger the action. So it looks like we can also incorporate something like that. So that's pretty cool. So we can toggle, show notifications or pause. So currently for two swipes, it doesn't register. So if I'm swiping on the back here, So they've overridden that. So here you can say show notifications panel. Okay, it doesn't seem to have done anything. So if I want to toggle fluid navigation gestures. But if I go none, then it works. Uh, maybe this is uh no, okay. So that it's paused here just in this app. So if I leave this app, it becomes uh, re-enabled. And if I switch back to that app. You can uh, play around with that there, so toggle probably works and I'm just not doing it right. I guess not, so currently only the pause and the none work. So I might just do none and then we can go back. You can here you can unlock the pro, uh, pro version as well, so that's also great. Known issues, you can take a look at there if you are interested in solving any issues that you might possibly have which is also great. And advanced, let's have a look at this. So pause in Android settings, so that's in the settings app. Pause while installing an app, quite useful because this is an overlay kind of thing and it will not allow you to tap on install if you have an overlay on. So here we can also pause automatically in the permission manager. So whenever you get the apps that tell you, uh, you know, you want to access the camera or the file storage, uh, this will disable itself so you can actually accept those permissions. And I'll also pause on the lock screen and home action compatibility. So some devices, uh, the home action might not work. Luckily on, I guess, Google's Android, it does work. And navigation by rotation mode. And you can change that as well. So if you want it to actually be on the bottom side of the tab, or the tablet, I say phone, or the right side of the screen, or just follow the bottom of the device. So towards there. So you can change that if you wanted to. But I think now we can just have a look at what I was talking about earlier when we were using a side navigation drawer, so something like this. So sometimes you could get it to work. So if I just slide a bit slowly there, a bit more forceful, or so that will go back. And if I swipe over, that'll change the app. But if I swipe up here, of course, when it's not within that area, it works just fine. But sometimes you can actually get it to slide open like that. I think if you're I don't know, so it's a bit iffy, so I would probably turn off the left side or make it really tiny just so it doesn't get in, in the way of swiping over for the left hand side navigation drawers in your apps. So overall, I think this navigation gesture thing, it's pretty good. I don't see any issues with it, just apart from that, but of course you can use the plethora of trigger sizes, sensitivity and things like that to overcome that. And I think all in all, as a free app so far, it's done a very good job, and if you just want that bit more of customization, uh, like apps and also themes, I think $3 isn't too much to ask for something like this. It's pretty good. So that's all I have to say about liquid, or I should say fluid navigation gestures, available on the Play Store for free, and of course there is a pro version, and should work on both, or and it does work on both rooted and non-rooted devices, which is a huge plus. I know a lot of people want to do cool things on Android without having to root their phones. And of course, this is one example of that. So thank you so much for watching guys. And as always, you can join us on Discord if you want to chat some more. I can just bring it up here now. Uh, yeah, so if you got any questions or things like that, you can definitely join us on there. We have a few people online at all times, very eager to help. And yeah, thanks for watching guys. And as always, happy flashing.